Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to focus on the lower end of the keyboard and specifically on the pitch and modulation uh, joystick. This is a Roland keyboard so they like joysticks. Uh, some other keyboards employ wheels so there is one wheel for modulation and another wheel that you can turn up and down for pitch bending. Let me just show you what these Two different functions do and then we'll talk about how to use them. So the modulation uh, usually depends on the sound and the, how it's programmed but usually what it does is it vibrates your sound. So I have a synth lead here and by turning on the modulation, pushing up the joystick, what you can hear is that it adds a vibrato to the sound. The pitch bend, as its name implies, bends the pitch. So it can bend either up or down. The amount of bending, once again, depends on the sound and the person who programmed it, but usually it's programmed to bend uh, a single uh, step, so two semitones. So when do you actually use these things? Well, modulation is whenever you have a note that you need to hold down for a long period of time, you can use add modulation to make it sound more interesting. Um, so you have some sort of solo, and if you just hold that note, it sounds kind of boring. But then, if you add modulation, kind of livens it up. So that's the easy uh, part conceptually. The pitch bend is kind of more difficult and it's once again it's used to emulate the bending of strings on a guitar. So in solos you usually uh, hear it uh, in contexts like these. So let me just give you a few ideas on how to use it. We're going to use the pentatonic scale in, in A, so that's A, C, D, E, G, and A. So it just repeats. The first thing that you can do with a uh, pitch uh, wheel or joystick is do what's known as a flurry. So first of all, listen to my right hand So I'm just repeating the simple phrase. Now I'm going to add the pitch bend on the first note, on the C. So I'm going to bend up and let go when I hit the second note, the D. So here's how it's going to sound. And it's actually simpler than it sounds. Let me do it slowly. So here's without the bend. And now I'm going to bend. And then just play it faster and faster. You can do these flurries with uh, lots of different patterns. For example, So what I'm doing here without the bend is which is fairly interesting in its own right but now when we add the bend it makes it even more exciting. Uh, here's another pattern. So. And with the bend, one last thought. Sometimes uh, bending is best done with instruments that you wouldn't expect it on. 
Example, here's a clavinet sound. And here I'm holding the A minor 7th chord, so that's an E, a G, an A, and a C. And now I'm going to bend the entire chord. So the entire chord bends rather nicely, gives, a, I think, an interesting flavor, and I'm assuming you didn't expect uh, to hear a clavinet being bent. Here's a different clavinet, and we can do it again with an A minor 7, but with a different inversion. So try, well try experimenting with this. Uh, if you want to play it safe, try bending uh, into a note that's inside the scale. So for example, if you are in an E and you bend by a whole note, you're actually bending up to an F sharp, which is not inside the A minor pentatonic scale. But if you bend up from a C, you're bending up to a D, which is in the pentatonic scale. So you're kind of assured that it will sound good. Once again, no rules, you need to experiment. That's it for now. I hope you learned something new, and I'll see you next lesson.